Hello friends, this video on sound part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now uh, let us try to understand the characteristics of sound waves in little more detail. Like uh, you would have seen that different sounds are different. How do we distinguish one sound from another? For example, uh, say uh, the sound of a bird and the sound of uh, a horn and the sound of say a small creature or maybe a small boy. So all these three sounds are very much different from one another. So why are these sounds different? Or how do we distinguish between different types of sounds? In fact, the way I speak, the sound which I produce and the sound which is produced by some other person, they also differ. So how do we characterize a sound wave? So every sound wave is described by a lot of parameters like wavelength, frequency, time period, pitch, amplitude, speed, and quality. So these are some of the characteristics of a sound wave. Now whenever we say that two sounds are different, that means those two sounds must be differing from each other in one or more of these characteristics. So now we are going to talk about each of these characteristics of a sound wave. So because of this, you hear different sounds like the sound of a guitar and the sound of the horn of a vehicle. They are very much different from each other because either they vary in wavelength or frequency or time period or pitch. So one of these has to vary between any two different sounds. So now before we talk about each of the characteristics of sound wave, let us quickly recall how exactly the sound waves are formed. I mean, how, why do we call it, a, call it a wave? So whenever we say a wave, this is what comes to our mind, right? So how this variation comes into picture? This is how it comes. So if this is the source of sound, this is a source which produces sound and this is the human ear which is receiving the sound. So in between this, how are the sound waves traveling in the form of disturbance? So it is like a disturbance which makes the particles of the medium to vibrate. So these blue dots which you see here, they represent nothing but the particles of the medium. So in one of our previous slides, I showed you the animation how the particles vibrate. Now when you look at the overall picture, you will see that in some region the density is very high, in some region the density is quite low. Again there comes a region where the density is high, again the density is low and so on. So here you have more number of particles, here less number of particles, here more, here less, here more and so on. So based on this density of particles, this plot can be drawn. So here you see as the particles density increases, so it increases, it comes down. So these are known as compressions. So these regions are called compressions. Why compressions? Because compress means what? So when you compress a lot of things together, so here you see too many particles are being compressed together. So this is compression. And this region where the particles are like kind of spread, that is called rarefaction. So alternate compressions and rarefactions form the sound wave. So when you plot it in this way, so this is how you get the plot. So it increases. Now what is actually increasing? Now we will try to understand this graph. So here on the x-axis, this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis and on x-axis we are considering time. So with time this is how it is varying. What is varying? That is nothing but the amplitude. So on the y-axis we consider amplitude. Now you might be uh, curious to know what is amplitude. So that is what we are going to understand now. But you understood, right, that this, with how this uh, picture of wave comes into scene. So, let's talk about amplitude. Now, when we talk about a sound wave, sound is always, always about uh, how loud or how uh, soft the sound is. For example, if uh, we, I tap the table very gently, so the sound produced will be very less, right? But if I struck it very hard, then the sound produced will be more. So maybe you'll be able to hear this, this sound even from outside the room because the sound is really, really, the volume is really, really high. 
right now the question is what determines whether the sound is loud or not so that is determined by amplitude so amplitude determines the loudness or softness of sound so on what factor does it depend? It primarily depends on the force with which the object is made to vibrate. Now, as I said just now, if I tap the table, so what am I actually doing? If a sound is being produced, that means when I tap the table, something is vibrating within the table and that vibration is producing sound. Now, if I tap the table very hard, in that case, I am applying a greater force. So when I apply a greater force, the vibration is also going to be more and the sound produced will be louder. So let us look at this example. This is your table and in the first scenario, you very gently tap the table. So what will happen? The sound produced is also going to be very less. So in this case, force applied is less, amplitude is less, therefore loudness is also less. In the second scenario, you tap it extremely hard and fast. In this case, force applied is more. So the sound produced is also more and therefore the amplitude is more. So loudness of sound is directly proportional to amplitude. Greater the amplitude, greater would be the loudness. So now let us try to understand this in terms of vibration because whenever we are talking about sound waves, it is caused by vibration. So how is this amplitude associated with vibration? Like if I am applying a greater force, I am saying that the amplitude will be more and if the amplitude is more, the vibration is going to be more and the sound produced will be more. So how is amplitude associated with the vibratory motion? So this is how the vibratory motion takes place. This is how vibration happens. So when this oscillation happens very fast, that is called a vibration. Okay, so let us try to see how, what is amplitude as far as this motion is considered. So if you so if you look at it, this is the central position, correct? Now what is happening? It is coming, going to this direction, it is coming back, again it is going to this direction, again it is coming back, again it is going to this direction and so on. But what is happening in this entire scenario? You see, if this is the center position, from here there is a maximum distance which it travels in either direction. So this maximum distance is known as amplitude. And how does it depend on force? Now let us assume that this pendulum is there in your hand. You have a stone tied to a string. Now when, when it is at its central position here, and let us suppose it is at rest, now you apply a force with your hand in this direction and that is how it starts moving in this direction. Now if you apply a greater force, it will go greater distance on both the directions. If you apply a smaller force, it will go to smaller distance in either direction. So therefore your force applied is directly proportional to amplitude and as the amplitude increases, your vibration is will increase. Now, let us suppose in one motion, if the amplitude is very small, in that case, maybe this will go only till here, it will come back, it will go here, so only this much vibration. Now, if the amplitude is more, in that case, maybe it will go till here, come back, again it will go till here. So, you see the vibration is more in this case. So, this is how vibration and amplitude are related to each other. Now, loud sound travels larger distances and vice versa. So, as I mentioned before also, so when you tap the table very hard, you, the sound will be heard over a larger distance. For example, you are tapping the table hard in your study room, but maybe somebody sitting in the living room will also be able to hear the sound. But if you tap it very gently, maybe somebody sitting next to you might not be able to hear it. So, if the sound is loud, it is it travels over larger distance so therefore people at a distant place can also hear it so this is amplitude so let us see what we have learned so far so when we talk about amplitude how do we define it it is the magnitude of maximum disturbance in the medium on either side of mean value so what is mean value mean value is nothing but the mean position so let us look at it so this is how the entire slide on amplitude looks like. So when we talk about vibration, so this is one particle and this particle will vibrate in this fashion. 
So this is how it is going to vibrate. So this is going to be the maximum disturbance on either side of mean value. So this is the mean value, the center point. The, it, the uh, mean position is termed as the mean value. So from here, the maximum distance which it travels in either direction, that is amplitude. So this is amplitude, again this is also amplitude and both will be equal. This is denoted by capital A mostly and so when you measure the amplitude in terms of uh, the it, graphically when you try to represent it, so this is how it looks like. So if you talk about a low amplitude, how will it look like? It will look something like this. Now as this particle vibrates, it moves in this direction. So this represents its mean position. So here if you see here the amplitude is going to be zero and let us say this is the maximum distance traveled. So the, here the amplitude is going to be capital A and here this is going to be minus A. So basically on the y axis, on x axis we are taking time, on y axis we are taking displacement from the mean position. So if you see at this point, when it is at its mean position, this is zero. Now then it moves in this direction, so the displacement increases to the final value which is amplitude. Again it falls back because it comes back like this and becomes zero. So again this also falls back and becomes zero. Then it further goes the same distance in the opposite direction. So this will also go the same distance in the opposite direction that is minus a. Now once it reaches here again it comes back to zero. So here also it will come back to zero. So basically from here till here this represents one oscillation or one vibration so one this vibration this much vibration is being represented by this one wave so this is how a low amplitude will look like if the amplitude is very high in that case how the plot will change this value is increasing because amplitude is denoted by the maximum value on the y-axis so obviously the wave will look longer Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.